You might have seen the Scimitar Elite mouse just launched from Corsair. This mouse has 12 programmable buttons that you can use with the Stream Deck software. However, if you're a dual PC user like myself, your first thought might have been, how the heck am I gonna control my streaming PC if this mouse is plugged into my gaming PC? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use your mouse to control OBS, even if you're running a dual PC setup. Grab your Scimitar mouse and plug it into your gaming PC via the USB receiver. Make sure your IQ software and your Stream Deck software are both up to date on the gaming PC. If you're running a single PC, you'll drag your OBS controls as usual to your Stream Deck software. And the great thing about this integration is you'll get this handy little widget to place anywhere on your screen so you don't have to try and memorize 12 buttons. So if you're like me and you have a dual PC setup, here's how to do it. Head to your OBS on your streaming PC and go to Tools, WebSocket Server Settings. Make sure the Enable WebSocket Server tick box is ticked. Then on your gaming PC, head to the Elgato Marketplace, make sure you're logged in and search for the Bar Raider OBS plugin. Hit Get and install that to your Stream Deck software. Once that's done, you should see a whole list of new options in your Stream Deck software. Now on your streaming PC, hit the Show Connect Info button and you should have a little screen pop up with your server IP, your server port and server password. Don't share this info with anyone and that is why I've blurred it. On your gaming PC, drag any function from the Bar Raider OBS plugin to any button on your mouse and you'll get this setup box pop up. Hit the link button and type in the server IP, server port and server password from the connect info on your streaming PC. Once you've entered the correct details, hit save. You'll get a confirmation that this is configured and you can now close that window and then we'll start setting up the Stream Deck functions. Let's set up a mute for the microphone in OBS. You want to select the input mute toggle and then navigate to your microphone input in OBS. Make sure you title your buttons so you can see them easily at a glance. And once that's done, give it a test. You might notice there is a tiny bit of delay, but that is totally normal when we're working across a network like this. Next, let's set up an OBS scene change toggle. We want to be able to change from our just chatting scene to our gaming scene with a single button. Drag over a multi-action switch and then place the scene switcher tool in the first page. Select your just chatting scene from OBS, name it chatting, and then to save time, copy and paste that action into page two. Change the title to game and change the scene to your gaming scene. Now you've got a chatting to gaming scene toggle that can go back and forth. Next, let's set up a blur gameplay toggle. For this one, you need to install the Composite Blur plugin, which you can see in my tutorials down in the description. Once you've got that installed, we'll make a filter toggle button. Select the source you want to blur. In this case, I'll be doing my gaming PC and select the Composite Blur filter. A nice little quality of life thing about the Bar Raider plugin is they've got built-in enabled and disabled icons, so you can see things easily at a glance. This filter is also a great function to have close by so you can blur any sensitive data or moments in a game that you don't want your audience to see. Next, let's make a close up button for your dramatic moments. We'll keep it nice and simple and just make it a source visibility function. Make sure in OBS you have a copy of your camera zoomed in so you can toggle this source on and off. Then head to your gaming PC Stream Deck software and find the source visibility tool. Select your scene and your source and just like that, you can stare into your audience's soul. Next, we'll do three quick Discord functions. These are nice and easy because we're not making these over the network. You'll need the Discord plugin, which you can get from the Elgato Marketplace. First, let's add a voice channel button. This will allow you to quickly join the selected VC and leave with a single button. You can also select a dynamic icon, which will show how many people are connected and who's speaking. Let's also drag over a mute and a deafen, which is an absolute must if you're streaming with other people and you want to talk to your own chat without disturbing everyone else on the call. These are just easy drag and drop buttons, so you won't need to configure anything. Next, let's set up a command to trigger in your Twitch chat. This is super simple and can be handy if you have viewers asking for your social links when you're locked into a game. You'll need the Bar Raider Twitch plugin from Elgato Marketplace for this one. Once you drag an action over, you'll be prompted to connect to your Twitch account. If you're already logged in, it is super simple. Let's drag across the send message tool. You can type in your channel or leave it blank as the empty channel field will default to the account you've linked. Then type in the message field, whatever your social media command title is. Test if it works by opening up your own Twitch chat and hitting the button. Obviously, if you're testing when you're not actually streaming online, make sure your bot is running if you wanna ensure the command is actually triggering. Next, let's make our mouse trigger our hype train music or any other sound effect you prefer. Search for sound and drag over the play audio button. Hit the three dots, find your audio file and hit open. You can adjust the action of the file to play and stop if you just want it to play once or loop and stop if you want it to continue playing until you hit that button again. You can also adjust the fade, the volume and the output. Now that we've had a little break and made some simpler buttons, let's go back to our WebSockets. Let's create a single button that makes a Twitch clip and triggers our replay buffer to make a high quality clip. If you don't have your replay buffer set up, I've got a tutorial linked in the description. 
Once you've got the replay buffer configured, drag over the instant replay tool. If your OBS replay buffer isn't running, it will say buffer off. To make sure it's connected, start the replay buffer on OBS and you'll see it change to buffer on. In the settings, enable Twitch chat integration and link your Twitch channel. Now you can select automatically create Twitch clip and you can even make it so that chat can generate replays with exclamation replay. If you wanna take it even further and make the clip automatically replay on your stream, tick this box and follow the steps. But bear in mind that is giving Twitch chat a lot of control. If you want auto instant replays on, I would suggest probably not allowing chat to generate them, but that's totally up to you. Next up, we'll make a button to toggle out lights on and off. I find this very useful because sometimes games get so freaking dark and it is impossible to see with lights on in your face. I personally have multiple key lights, so let's make a multi-action switch. On page one, we'll drag two on and off controls and select my left and right lights. Select the accessories and make sure they're set to on. And on page two, we'll do the same, but we'll change them to be off. If you are someone that just has a single light, you don't need the multi-action. Now with this button, we can quickly toggle my lights on and off if we need to see in any dark areas. And what kind of video would it be if we didn't make a rage quit multi-action? Sometimes you just gotta hit Alt F4 and have a cute cat compilation to soothe your rage. In your multi-action, make a hotkey with Alt F4 to close your game, and then a website button with your go-to cat compilation ready to play. You'll be relaxed at the press of a button. If you made it this far in the video and you're a single PC user, you can make all of these buttons minus all of those extra steps we took to control our streaming PC. You can just use the OBS Studio plugin without all of those extra steps we took to do the web sockets. So I hope this video was still useful. If at any point the Stream Deck buttons on your mouse stop working with the streaming PC, double check the Show Connect info in OBS. And if that's all correct, but it's still not working, hit the Reset Settings button at the bottom of the tools in the Stream Deck software and type in all that info again. This setup definitely works best on a wired network with a static IP address, so bear that in mind. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them down in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.